Previously in this tutorial series, we looked at how to create a Vani GPI project on Glitch, how to get your credentials set up, how to get webhook endpoints set up, and now we're going to look at how to remix that project. If you're using Glitch, you're probably already familiar with the concept of remixing. You'll have your own projects, of course, that were started from remixes, and then you can look at other projects, like for instance, Vonage's projects on Glitch, and you can remix those. So, if we go here and we look for something to remix, how about the Nexmo SMS API, we can load up this project and then there will be a little button that's going to allow us to remix it, to edit it in the corner there. We can view the source and that will reveal to us what exactly we're going to be getting a copy of. We can check out all the server stuff, we can check out the readme of course and see what the code looks like and if we want to make some changes to that or use it as a jumping off point for our own code, then we can remix it. And we can now edit this project here, got it. So we're going to wait for it to load, it's going to pop up, and then we're going to see that we have a copy of all that code. So now if I want to make some changes to it or extend it, I can easily do that. You can see that I'm getting an error down here as soon as I remix it, and that's because I don't have the credentials that the original had set. When I remix something on Glitch, I'm going to get this .env file that serves as a template for me because it's still got all the variable names in here, it just doesn't have the secret values anymore from the original project. So I can just go and fill these in and then hopefully my code will just work. So it's very slick in that all I'm really doing here is configuring because the installation happened as part of the remixing process. If I go over here to package.json, you can see that all of my dependencies are already installed here. And so I don't need to import those or download them from NPM. If I go into the terminal, I can take a look and verify that when I check the node modules folder, I've already got all of those dependencies and all of their dependencies. Everything is ready to go. So you can see that I don't have to do anything except for set my environment variables. So I've started with somebody else's application that I could see running and see working, verify that it did what I wanted it to, check the code and look and make sure that it was something I could work with and understand. And now I'm at a point where I can then go and extend that. I can break it, I can mess around with it, I can make subtle changes or I can overhaul the whole thing. But I can use that as a basis, which is really cool and a really quick way to get started, especially if you are doing something that requires a lot of configuration. Something I find useful is creating starter projects that I intend to remix myself. When I do that, I create them with the intent that they will be remixed, so I think about how it's going to look when somebody clicks that remix button, be it me or somebody else. Projects are designed to be remixed, so you'd have to actually go and turn stuff off in order to hide it and make it not remixable, but you could do that accidentally or in, in, on purpose by making it private or archiving the project. If you want to make sure that somebody does remix it, you can share the location of it. You can send a link to the project, the app, or the code. And then there's a, an edit link as well that will allow people to collaborate with you on the, same, on the same version of your project. Some other things I like to do when I'm coding with the intent of remixing are to try and comment the code as much as possible, leave a readme with some kind of setup instructions in case there's more to it than just running the package.json, but also go through package.json and make sure there aren't any dependencies that I ended up not using and that everything has the right version. I want to do the same sort of cleanup to my environment variables and make sure that there's nothing that I ended up not using and that everything has clear names. And then if I have any files that need to be hidden or not seen by people who might be remixing it, make sure that they're in a .data directory, which they hopefully are already. If it only contains your private key, of course, using .data isn't too tricky. But if you actually have data in there, as per the name, then you might want to give some thought to whether you need any of that data to be pre-existing. And if so, create a copy of it in a public place so that people who are remixing it can use it. Vonage has a lot of projects on Glitch that you can remix now that you understand how and why. And they run the gamut. Um, it's under the Vonage dev tag. And if you look at our recent projects and scroll through them there, you'll find things that are extremely basic and bare bones. And you'll find things that are very specific demos, some things that are very full featured. We cover a lot of the different APIs that we have, video and conversations. And you can do SMS, you can do WhatsApp, you can do all kinds of things. 
if you search for starter, you'll find a few of the sort of minimal examples that I've put up, um, but you'll also find, again, cool demos that people have made and contributed here. The whole idea behind Glitch seems to be sort of view source but saved you a click, and so these really specific demos can be very handy if you want to do something in particular and you want to make sure that you're building uh, not completely from scratch. On the other hand, if you have an application that you need to architect in a specific way, one of these more um, more generic examples might, might serve you better. Even when a lot of the configuration and setup is handled for you by Glitch, you can find that once you start pulling multiple pieces together, say Express and React and Vonage's APIs, you need a little bit of assistance to get them to all play nicely together. Obviously our remixable projects are focused on JavaScript, and we don't cover nearly the extent of all possible permutations, so if you see something that's missing that you're really interested in having a, a starter for the Vonage APIs for, you can always hit us up in Slack, uh, vonage-community.slack.com, and say, hey, I'm looking for a glitch starter for this, and that will give us something fun to look at. Um, in the meantime, however, you can also look at the starters that we've created here and see how you might be able to repurpose them for your specific setup or what you want to do with your project. The fun of remixing is really being able to play with this stuff right out of the box and then being able to go and tweak the code and see how your changes impacted it. It makes a big difference in being able to get familiar with the code and the tools that you're using quickly, I think. So that's remixing Vonage API projects and that's the conclusion of our tutorial series on Vonage API projects on Glitch. I hope that now you'll be able to find a Vonage project that you'd like to remix and get started with. Or if you create something brand new with Vonage APIs on Glitch, I hope you'll let us know.